It has the algorithm random walks and geodesic currents. All right. Uh, thank you, Vladimir. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody who is here and who is watching over Zoom. Uh, it is an honor to uh, speak in this conference, in particular because uh, I was uh, one of Gilbert's students. Uh, in fact, I was his student here at the Gradient Center, even though it was mostly uh, at a different location before the Gradient Center moved to this building. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, I knew Ben, uh, at least from uh, frequent interactions with him uh, at the New York Group Theory Seminar at various other conferences. So I think both Gilbert and Ben were very large presences here in the New York uh, group theory community and uh, in the group theory community in general. Um, so I'll talk about weighted algorithm. Uh, this is uh, also one of the topics that I initially became interested in while I was still a graduate student. I learned at least a little bit about it from Gilbert. And uh, the particular uh, aspect that I'll, I'll talk about today, which is the experimental behavior of the weighted algorithm uh, on uh, random elements uh, also originated uh, at the time when Gilbert was working uh, on developing the Magnus software project and fairly quickly while playing with it and with talking to other people who were also trying to use it it became clear that uh, what uh, what what we were seeing when, while trying to run various algorithms uh, on Magnus or some other uh, computer packages uh, was not really the worst case complexity, which is what uh, uh, group theory was supposed to be studying. It was something else. Uh, and later on, uh, uh, so we were really seeing the behavior of uh, these algorithms on random inputs, uh, on generic inputs. And uh, later on, this uh, uh, point of view led to uh, uh, the notion of generic case complexity and various other things. So uh, this is. Uh, uh, somehow the motivation for, for this activity comes from uh, uh, those early experiments uh, from uh, with, uh, the Magnus package. So um, uh, the uh, whited algorithm itself, it deals with the atomosism problem for free groups. It's a very classical problem where uh, the question is where when you're given two elements U and V in the free group of rank R, uh, and you want to decide whether or not they're related by an atomorphism, that is to say whether or not there exists an atomorphism alpha of this free group such that uh, this alpha takes U to V. And there is uh, also a, a a version of this uh, of the same problem where u and v are not elements but rather conjugacy classes and then uh, alpha is not an honest atomorphism but an out atomorphism it's almost the same problem so i'll sort of pass between the two uh, uh, as needed and uh, uh, this problem was actually solved in full at least uh, in terms of producing an algorithm by whited in a 1936 paper and this is uh, still one of the sort of most interesting to me uh, algorithmic results uh, in a group theory, even though it's quite old. So why to produce the complete algorithm for solving this problem? And the interesting thing is that uh, the worst case complexity of this algorithm is still unknown. That is to say, uh, I'll mention this later, that uh, there is an a priori sort of fairly obvious exponential bound in terms of the maximum of the length of U and V, uh, 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 how to, uh, the, on, on the running time of this algorithm. But other than that, uh, I mean, it's not really known. Uh, 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 so other than the obvious exponential bound uh, on the running time of the algorithm, nothing is known except for the uh, case of rank two. Uh, when the free group uh, FR has rank two. So in this case, it's known that the entire algorithm runs in polynomial time, in fact, a low degree polynomial time. But other than that, the complexity of whited algorithm, even though it's almost 100 years old, uh, is not known, the worst case complexity. So uh, uh, let me tell you at least a little bit about the structure of, of this uh, algorithm. So why did it produced a, a particularly nice finite generating set uh, uh, of the group of all uh, uh, atomorphisms of the free group uh, whose elements are called whited moves. So maybe I'll say something about uh, what they are later. And if not, it's not particularly important for the moment. Uh, so what is important is that uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, there are some kind of generalizations of Nielsen atomorphisms. So, so where you, uh, you basically is a permute the generators, uh, or sometimes you take a generator and multiply it by another generator, or the inverse of another generator. You know, so it's a slight generalization of these very basic atomorphisms. I'll mention more generally. Uh, if, uh, comes to that what what they are, but for the moment it's not terribly important. Uh, so, and. Um, 
so we can say that an element in the free group is atomorphically minimal if uh, for every uh, atomorphism alpha uh, so the length the freely reduced length of alpha of u is greater than or equal than the length of u that is to say alpha cannot be uh, u cannot be shortened by applying an atomorphism and there is a similar notion of being atomorphically minimal for conjugacy classes or if you like for cyclically reduced work or for words which are considered uh, up to conjugation where you look at the cyclically reduced lengths instead of the freely reduced lengths uh, and uh, yeah, so a conjugacy class is atomorphically minimal if for every atomorphism alpha, the cyclically reduced length of uh, alpha of uh, u is greater than or equal to the cyclically reduced length of u. And as I said, there are two types of these white atomorphisms. The first type is not uh, sort of very interesting. So basically, it's where you take your given three bases, these elements a, a1 through a, a r, uh, elements of the bases, you permute them, and maybe you invert some of them. So uh, this is a boring atomorphism because it doesn't do anything to the legs. Uh, so it doesn't uh, change the free reduced length of an element. It doesn't change the cyclic reduced length of an element. Uh, and uh, the other white atomorphisms, uh, uh, so type two white atomorphisms. So uh, here is a more formal definition. Uh, so the, there should exist uh, an element A, uh, so which is either a generator or the inverse of a generator, such that for every AI, uh, so uh, which is our basis element, uh, tau of AI is either AI or AI times A or uh, AI times A inverse on the left, or it's conjugate by uh, uh, A like this, so A inverse AI A. And uh, also uh, over here, uh, uh, tau of this element A should always be equal to A. So that's sort of the convention. So this is a slight generalization of uh, Newton uh, atomorphisms where some elements are fixed, some elements are sort of pre or post multiplied by a generator and some elements are conjugated by this uh, 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 distinguished generator. And uh, White had proved uh, the following theorem, which actually implies uh, 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 an algorithmic statement, but uh, as such, it is an else break uh, theorem. So what does it say? It says that uh, if a conjugacy class is not minimal, then there exists a whited atomorphism which reduces its uh, conjugacy length. So remember, the set of whited atomorphisms is finite, and in fact, because whited atomorphisms of the first kind they don't reduce, uh, they don't change the length at all. So this tau here has to be a whited atomorphism of the second kind. So and so this is the first statement that if something is not minimal, you can uh, uh, shorten it by applying a, a whited atomorphism of the second kind. And the second statement is uh, what happens uh, when you have two elements. Uh, um, ah, so let me mention that this first statement already implies that uh, an element is atomorphically minimal if and only if it cannot be shortened by applying a, a whited move, right? You know, so that's what the statement applies. And the second part says that suppose you have two conjugacy classes which are already minimal. So then uh, White had proved that uh, they lie in the same atomorphic orbit if and only if uh, their lengths, the length of these two elements, the cyclic reduced lengths, are the same. And there exists a finite chain of White moves, uh, which takes the first element to the second uh, while keeping the cyclic reduced lengths the same. So that's the statement. And if you think about it, uh, taken together, these two statements uh, give you uh, a complete algorithm. So uh, let me introduce an auxiliary object called the atomorphism graph. Uh, uh, so which we'll use uh, uh, while describing uh, you know, the algorithm. So the vertices uh, of this atomorphism graph are just conjugacy classes uh, of elements of the free group. And edges, uh, they correspond to applying uh, um, uh, a whited move uh, to an element u. Uh, uh, if this whited move keeps uh, the uh, length, uh, 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 keeps the cyclic reduced length of the element uh, the same. So if it doesn't go, go up, uh, so uh, we, we put an edge between u and tau of u if u and tau of u have the same uh, cyclic reduced length. So that's how the edges uh, in the whited, in the atomorphism graph uh, look like. And now we can describe the algorithm. So uh, for deciding whether or not two, let's say, conjugacy classes are related by an atomorphism. So first, uh, by uh, uh, using this first part uh, uh, over here, uh, we can replace both u1 and u2 by the corresponding minimal representatives in their orbits. So we take an element, let's say u1, we go through the list of whited moves, and we see whether any of them reduce the length. If yes, so we apply one which reduces the length, and then we repeat until we cannot uh, decrease the length uh, any longer. And then part one uh, of white theorem tells us that we've reached the minimum. This is the 
uh, atomophically minimal re representative uh, in the orbit of u. Uh, and we do it with both uh, u and v. So we replace u and v by the minimal representatives, u prime and v prime, atomophically minimal representatives. And then we want to decide whether u prime and v prime are in the same atomophic orbit. If they have different lengths, if they have different cyclic reduced lengths, then we stop and say they're not in the same orbit. There is nothing to do. And if they are in the same of the same lengths, then we have to look at this uh, atomorphism graph. Uh, you know, so remember where edges correspond to uh, applications of uh, whited moves at the level uh, uh, given by the length of this element. And we have to see whether these elements, uh, they belong to the same connected component uh, of this atomorphism graph. And we can construct, we can, as a practical matter, we can sort of uh, uh, just concentrate on one of them, let's say u prime, and construct this connected component by what's called uh, in the graph theory, press first or bits first, I forgot which one it is. So, uh, so we, uh, what? Depth first. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we, Breast first, right? So we construct first the ball of radius one around the element by drawing all the edges. And then when we constructed that, we draw all the edges out of those, construct the ball of radius two and so on. And we keep doing that until the graph stops changing. So, and that's the connected component. So once we constructed the connected component, we can check whether the other element V prime belongs to it. And that will tell us whether two elements are in the same atomic orbit. So uh, what's the deal with this algorithm uh, from the point of view of uh, um, complexity theory? So the first part actually works pretty fast. Uh, so it seems like it uh, uh, works in linear time. In actuality, it's sort of, if you're honest, it basically works in quadratic time in the length of U, in, in something like the maximum of the length of U and V, uh, because you have to do linear amount of work for each step where you have an element, you have to run through this finite collection of whited moves and you have to find one which possibly reduces it. That already requires a linear amount of work. And then you have to re repeat it sort of this number of steps at most linearly many times. And so the total complexity is quadratic. However, so that's still good. You know, it's still low degree polynomial. What's bad is the second part because the second part requires you to construct this uh, uh, component of the atomorphism graph. And it's pretty clear that it's uh, going to be a priori at most exponential in, uh, in terms of the length of this element U prime. And the only thing that we know about the length of the element U prime is that it's less than or equal than the length of U. And the length of V prime is less than or equal than the length of V. So maybe they're almost the same. So if we get something which is exponential uh, in the length of U, you, I mean, and that's that's that. So uh, okay, it's exponential the length of u prime, but it's not really an improvement. Uh, and so uh, that's why uh, the only estimate known in sort of a priori on the worst case complexity of whited algorithm is exponential time. And as I said, uh, 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 so part one works in the quadratic time in the maximum of the length of u and v. Part two works in exponential time. Uh, because the size of this component uh, uh, of u prime is a priori exponential in terms of the uh, length of u prime. So uh, I mentioned uh, that uh, uh, the case of uh, uh, rank two is special, and the resu result by Alexei, uh, well, Vladimir, uh, uh, also Bilal Khan, I forgot who did what in what order, but essentially it's known uh, that uh, it uh, uh, works in. Um, a polynomial time uh, for uh, uh, for the rank uh, being two, but this is a very special case for rank greater than equal than three. Nothing in general is known other than uh, Whitehead's uh, exponential time estimate. So this is very unsatisfactory, and it is still very unsatisfactory, but that's where we are. So what else is known? Uh, so there is this probabilistic result uh, from my paper with Schupp and Spielrein, 2006, uh, which uh, I'll explain first, and then. You know, uh, Hopefully I'll get to its generalization. So first there is a, a non-probabilistic uh, um, notion here of being strictly minimal. So we are going to say that the conjugacy class U in the free group is strictly minimal if for every uh, uh, whited move of the second kind, which is not a conjugation. So the, uh, whited moves of the second kind are very occasionally actually in atomorphisms. Uh, so they can be a conjugation by a generator. So for, if for every non-inner whited atomorphism of the uh, tau of the second kind, uh, this tau strictly increases the, the length of U. So it actually, it doesn't make it smaller, doesn't keep it the same. It always goes up. 
So, and it's fairly easy to check that if U is strictly minimal, uh, um, uh, then, uh, you know, then this U is, uh, in fact, minimal. So that follows from the first part of Whitehead theorem. So be strictly minimal implies being minimal. And uh, if uh, the important thing here is that if U is strictly minimal and it has length N, then the size of this connected component of the atomophic, uh, uh, atomorphism graph is actually less than or equal than some constant, uh, which the size of this constant depends only on R. Uh, because remember, the bad part of the second uh, uh, step of Whitehead algorithm was where we looked at chains of Whitehead moves which do not, uh, uh, which preserve the length of the element. And here, essentially, everything increases the length of the element, except for a few things which cannot help but preserve it, which are these permutational atomorphisms. And permutational atomorphisms, they preserve the property of being strictly minimal. This is uh, sort of fairly easy to see from the definition. So basically, here, the size of this component is not only linear in the sense of, in the length of U, it's actually constant if you fix the rank of the group. So which means that a whited algorithm uh, if u is strictly minimal, is going to work in at most quadratic time on any pair u v, where u is strictly minimal and v is arbitrary, and it only really works in quadratic time because you have to first minimize v. If v was already minimal, then the entire thing will work in uh, sort of linear time, basically. So um, what we proved uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Vladimir and Paul Schoop in, in this 2006 paper uh, was that uh, if R is at least two and uh, if R is a free group on A1 and AR, and if we now take WN to be a, a, a random word of length N, a random free reduced word of length N. So uh, here the technical uh, term is simple non backtracking random work on R of length N. But if you don't like random works, you can think about just uh, uh, looking at the sphere of radius n in the Kelly graph of the free group with respect to this uh, free basis and taken uniformly at random element uh, from the sphere. So that's what Wn is. So Wn is a sort of uniformly random uh, uh, freely reduced element uh, of length n. Uh, so then the, uh, uh, the claim is that this probability tending to one as n tends to infinity, Wn is strictly minimal. So, which means that on this kind of random elements, uh, so if Wn is uh, uh, this kind of uniformly chosen uh, random element, uh, then uh, Whitehead algorithm on any pair Wn v is going to work quickly. Even the second unpleasant portion of it is going to work quickly because Wn is already, as a conjugacy class, is going to be uh, um, uh, uh, strictly minimal. Uh, the, the back component of the whited graph is going to be very small, and all we need to do is to reduce v to its minimal representative, and then uh, sort of check whether v belongs to that connected component uh, of u. So uh, 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 let me now. Uh, uh, so I'll use a little bit of the board if I'm able to erase something from it. Uh, so what do they mean by a uh, 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 simple number hacking random box? So I sort of uh, put here a little bit the, um, the precise description. What I meant was uh, that uh, if we have uh, our free group on A1 AR, uh, uh, we are going to uh, generate the word WN letter by letter, where uh, we pick uh, the letter X1 uniformly at random uh, from the alphabet uh, A1 uh, plus minus one, AR plus minus one. So there are two R elements and we put uniform probability measure at it, uh, on it and we pick uh, the first letter uniformly at random from this alphabet. And then after that, uh, we pick uh, X2 uh, uniformly at random uh, from uh, two R minus one letters. Uh, so which remain from this alphabet if we, uh, uh, we don't want X2 to be the inverse of X1. So if we uh, remove X1 inverse from this alphabet, there are two R minus one letters and we pick X2 to be uniformly at random uh, so that it's not an inverse of X1 and we continue. So uh, it's easy to see that this way uh, we generate a, a free reduced word and uh, sort of uh, after N steps, you can also check that uh, uh, this process gives us uh, the uniform distribution of the sphere in the Kelly graph of radius n. So the question is, uh, uh, what happens for more general kinds of random walks? Uh, so here we did something extremely symmetric, uh, very simple, but there are other random walks that one can do on the free group of more general nature. So for example, uh, so one possibility 
is that uh, we can uh, take this uh, free group and fix some other generating set, uh, 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 which is not the free basis, uh, you know. So, and then uh, 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 we take this S uh, to be uh, uh, sort of, uh, we symmetrize it uh, and maybe uh, we assigned each of the generators uh, uh, A, A in this S, uh, some positive probability. Uh, in such a way that uh, 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 the sums, uh, well, let me call it S, the sums of these probabilities uh, are equal to one. Uh, and now uh, we generate the word WN uh, uh, without worrying about the word being freely reduced. We just uh, each time, according to this probability law, pick one of the generators you know, from this set, and that's going to be our letter X1, X2, uh, X3, up to Xn, and then we multiply them. So we independently uh, randomly pick uh, increments, and then we... I mean, there will be cancellations, yes. Uh, so uh, as I said, at the moment, but this is what's called a group random block. So we allow cancellations, we don't worry about them. We just multiply independently chosen generators and uh, we still want to understand what happens here uh, uh, with this element from the point of view of the behavior of white algorithm. Or uh, we can uh, do something slightly different uh, from what we did uh, uh, before. Uh, so uh, remember we uh, had this free group uh, uh, which was the free group on A1 uh, AR. And uh, instead of uh, generating freely reduced words, we can, let's say, generate positive words. And maybe we even will assign some different weights to different letters, uh, you know. So that way there will be no cancellations, but, you know, there are other ways to randomly generate words, uh, you know, so than what we did, uh, you know, in that theorem. So uh, it is fairly easy to see once you start playing with this question that, uh, 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 random words generated by using this kind of processes are generally speaking not going to be strictly minimal. So here is a, a nice exercise. You can try to check that in the free group of rank two, if uh, uh, you know, if you give a probability one tenth and b probability nine tenths and try to generate this uh, random word, uh, you know, so random positive word using this probability, it's not going to be strictly minimal. Uh, it's not going to be minimal. And it's not going to be strictly minimal. There will be some kind of whited move. Uh, uh, which will work for all of them, which will uh, make it smaller. Uh, but uh, uh, something is still supposed to be, uh, um, uh, yeah, so over here, uh, I actually sort of uh, unpack a little bit of a mystery, even though I'm not telling you why, but you can check that this particular, uh, it's even an Nielsen atomorphism, something that sends A to A, B inverse, and B, B inverse, actually will decrease uh, the length of this kind of random element. So you can uh, try to do this computation and check. So um, let me now uh, tell you what actually happens in this more general uh, random processes, which, which is true. Uh, uh, so it turns out that thick minimality uh, is lost, but something is still preserved. So um, here is a, a more general notion, the notion of being M minimal, where M is a number in integer, let's say, greater than or equal than one. And we're going to say that a conjugate class U is going to be M minimal if uh, um, whenever uh, uh, we have a chain uh, like this uh, of, uh, uh, um, of whited moves uh, 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 such that it starts with this element U as U zero and then goes to U one, U two and UK uh, such that all of the elements U one and UK are distinct and their lengths uh, uh, go down like this. The length of U zero is greater than or equal than U one, greater than or equal than UK. Then the requirement is that the, the length of every such chain uh, uh, must be less than or equal than our number M. All, all, all of one, a little all, a little all, yeah. So uh, over here, once again, the definition of being M minimal, M is fixed, so M is not going to depend. Uh, so M is like, uh, think about M as being 200 or something. So we are going to fix some number M and we are going to say that the conjugacy class U is M minimal. If whenever we have a, a chain of distinct uh, conjugacy classes uh, starting with U, uh, uh, which are obtained one from another by a single whited move in such a way that uh, the length is sort of monotone non increasing uh, along this chain, then the length of the chain is less than or equal than M. 
So uh, uh, if you think about it, it turns out, uh, so if an element is M minimal for a fixed M, uh, then uh, this element is already pretty close to being uh, uh, atomorphically minimal because when you start applying the first part of Vaya's algorithm and you make it go down, down, and down, so you cannot do it for more than M steps, which means that you're close to the minimum. Uh, I mean, you may not be already at the minimum as you would have been if you were strictly minimal, but you're close to it. More importantly, uh, uh, the second part says that, uh, uh, I mean, okay, uh, that uh, the length of this, uh, once you sort of hit the minimal representative U prime, which you obtain from U by sort of uh, completely minimizing it, uh, you cannot uh, continue. Uh, so th th that chain, uh, uh, you know, of uh, wired moves, which keeps the length of the element the same, which uh, participates in the definition of the connected component of the automorphism graph, the length of such a chain starting with U prime cannot be more than M either. Right, you know, so that's the uh, uh, also a, a consequence of the definition. So, which means that the size of the uh, component of this uh, U prime, the minimal representative of U, is going to be bounded by some constant depending on the number M and on the rank R. So, uh, you just have to uh, basically it means that the diameter of uh, uh, U prime. Uh, the, uh, the diameter of this a u of u prime uh, with, uh, as a graph with center u, uh, u prime is going to be less than or equal than m uh, you know so that's what uh, it is and then uh, uh, sort of we get that the size of this connected component is bounded by a constant uh, which again still means that a white algorithm works in quadratic time on any pair u v where u is m minimal and v is anything uh, of course m has to be fixed here you know this is important so uh, what we prove uh, is, uh, uh, so I prove, uh, you know, so is uh, some kind of a generalization of this, uh, all result uh, from 2006 with, uh, with Vladimir and Paul Shup. So, and uh, we proved that uh, for uh, um, basically for two types of random processes, uh, uh, the, the elements uh, are going to be, uh, uh, you know, random what WN generated by the two types of random processes are, are going to be M minimal with some M depending only on the process and not on the element. So what are those random processes? So one of them uh, is basically this kind of uh, 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 group random work where now we just pick any finite generating set uh, of the group, assign any positive probabilities which add up to one and uh, uh, sort of generate uh, this element WN by multiplying independent uh, increments. And the other, uh, so this is the first type of a random work. And the second type of a random work is a graph random work of, of a nice kind. Uh, so where we fix a finite graph, uh, gamma, uh, so uh, whose uh, uh, fundamental group is isomorphic to the free group FR. And uh, I also want the degree of every vertex here to be at least three to avoid some unpleasantness. And uh, uh, so we fix this isomorphism. So uh, th uh, this graph does not have to be a wedge of circles, which is what you would have if you were working with a free basis, but it's basically like a slight generalization of a basis. So we identify the free group with the final group of this graph gamma. And now uh, uh, we do a random walk on this graph uh, where uh, it's a Markovian random walk uh, where uh, for every edge, uh, it's a non backtracking uh, random walk on this graph. Uh, uh, so where, uh, 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 so for every edge E uh, and an edge E, e prime uh, uh, such that uh, E, e prime is a, a reduced edge path of length, uh, of length two. So we assign some transition probability from E to E prime, and we require all of such transition probabilities to be uh, uh, bigger than uh, zero. And uh, I mean, of course, uh, uh, there has to be some compatibility condition. So once the edge E is fixed, so uh, it has, uh, you know, several possible edges that continue it uh, in a, in a non-backtracking way. So in this picture, there are two. And uh, so for every E, the sum of the transition probabilities from E to this, this E prime and to this E double prime has to be equal to one. Uh, so, and you have these probabilities sort of associated with every directed edge. And this uh, will still define a random walk on the graph if we put some initial distribution on the set of directed edges of the graph. So we put some um, initial probability distribution. So, and after that, uh, so we pick the first edge. Uh, uh, so we, we pick the first edge 
uh, and then according to the probability, uh, sort of uh, this transition probability, we, we pick the second edge so that the E1, E2 is a reduced path of length two. Uh, uh, then we pick the third edge, uh, 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 the fourth, uh, and so on. So we, we generate this uh, random uh, reduced path of length n, and it's generally not going to be closed. So, but then we sort of close it up. Uh, so it doesn't particularly matter how. So there is, uh, we maybe started some base vertex. So we, uh, we generate this uh, uh, long random uh, reduced path. And then we go maybe in the shortest way uh, uh, from this vertex uh, back to the origin to create a, a closed path. And we work with that. And technically speaking, we have to trans uh, transfer this closed path uh, using the system back into the pre group. And that uh, will create an element of the pre group. So uh, this is a random process, and the third type of a random process, it generalizes uh, slightly, uh, well, uh, unfortunately, I don't really have time to explain the example where I put positive probabilities on all uh, of the standard generators. So let me not explain uh, what I mean by that, but th there is a, a short type of a random walk which doesn't quite fit any of these two uh, sort of uh, uh, patterns, uh, so which is still covered by the theorem, and uh, the uh, conclusion of the theorem is that uh, um, uh, so then there exists this M, which depends only on the random process you uh, use, but not on the element uh, uh, Wn, such that with probability tangent to one as n tends to infinity, uh, the element Wn is M minimal, and for that reason, uh, the divided algorithm uh, uh, on any pair of inputs uh, WNV is going to work in at most quadratic time. Another thing that comes out of the proof is that the stabilizer of this conjugacy class WN in the outer automorphism group or the free group is finite, but that's uh, sort of uh, for the moment less interesting. So uh, as I said, uh, uh, this result uh, turns out to apply to this group random works. Uh, uh, where S is any finite generating set. Uh, so, uh, and uh, we assign some positive, uh, so closed on the inversions. So we assign some positive probabilities to elements of S. And uh, um, it uh, the result also applies to this uh, positive random works where we assign to every uh, generator from the standard basis some positive probability and to a uh, graph random works, which uh, I'm not going to. Uh, um, uh, go into uh, so uh, uh, other than the picture that they explained over there. So uh, the the main tool uh, that is being used here are so-called geodesic currents on three groups, which is certain kind of uh, invariant measures. Uh, um, so it comes uh, actually from differential geometry, from hyperbolic geometry, uh, originally from the work of Bonahon about uh, geodesic flow on hyperbolic surfaces. So, but then it turns out that uh, this notion of geodesic currents uh, uh, is applicable to many other situations, in particular, uh, uh, hyperbolic groups, uh, three groups. Uh, and uh, so the technical definition uh, is that these are measures on the double boundary, which is the set of pairs uh, of distinct points uh, in the boundary of the free group. So uh, you can think about the free group as uh, maybe a tree. Uh, its scaly graph is a tree, uh, 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 a regular tree, and the boundary uh, is a uh, uh, some kind of a counter set which consists uh, maybe of geodesic rays. Uh, so there is a natural way to topologize it or even metrize it uh, uh, so that it becomes a compact uh, uh, metric space. And uh, there is uh, an object called uh, the double boundary, which consists of, of pairs of distinct points uh, 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 in the boundary. Uh, so, and uh, with any pair of distinct points, you can associate sort of a geometric and un 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 unparameterized geodesic between them. So instead of pairs of distinct points, you can think about the space of unparameterized geodesics in the Kelly graph. <laughs> and the free group, it acts uh, uh, on this object by translations. And geodesic currents, technically speaking, are uh, locally finite positive Borel measures uh, uh, on this object, which are invariant with respect to this uh, group action. Uh, with, uh, so this might not tell you very much, probably doesn't, unless you've already seen this stuff before. So I'll just tell you that as a practical matter, uh, these uh, um, geodesic currents, uh, you can think about them as weight functions. So uh, they assign uh, uh, weights uh, to uh, uh, to every word, uh, every uh, 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 every freely reduced word. Uh, uh, so uh, in uh, uh, in this group, uh, 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 
there is a certain non negative number that has been assigned the weight of this V in this current mu, and somehow it generalizes the frequency uh, with which um, uh, uh, with which V as a sort of finite uh, ordinary of really reduced word occurs in a cyclic reduced word. So you can think about W conjugacy class has been represented by a cyclic reduced word W, which you've written on a circle. And then uh, we can count uh, how many times uh, 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 and from how many places you can read uh, the word V uh, uh, inside the circle without going off the circle. And this will be the number of occurrences of V in W. And that would be like the weight of V in W, which is also greater than or equal than zero. So this geodesic current, they somehow generalize this kind of an assignment of weights. So without a conjugacy class being present, you know, so some axioms, uh, you know, some uh, 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 work of switch conditions uh, have to be satisfied, but uh, it is some kind of a, uh, assignment of weights which satisfies some additional uh, um, uh, linear equations, the time suppression, and that's how to think about uh, a geodesic current uh, 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 sort of explicitly. So the main technical result that makes uh, this uh, 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 theorem that I told you about uh, work. Ah, so before I do that, let me just say that. Uh, 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 because geodesic currents, there are some kind of measure theoretic uh, 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 generalizations of uh, 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 of conjugacy classes. So it turns out that uh, before we were talking about the notion of the cyclically reduced lengths of an of an element with respect to a free basis, and uh, there is a corresponding notion of a cyclically reduced lengths uh, uh, of a current with respect to a basis. So you can probably guess that this is something like uh, uh, the sum of the weights of AI in mu, uh, you know, the numbers of times that individual generators occur in mu. So it's some kind of a generalization of the notion of uh, cyclic reduced length, but it, uh, it is applicable uh, uh, to a current and not just a conjugacy class. And once this notion is in place, I didn't mention it, but atomorphisms and even out, yeah, uh, so in fact, uh, to every conjugacy class, there is an associated currents, and those kind of currents up to taking the scale multiples, they're even dense in the space of all currents. Yeah, 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 yes, precisely. Uh, so uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, uh, similarly to conjugacy classes, there is this notion of lengths, and uh, you can also apply atomorphisms to them. Uh, uh, so to get new currents. So I'm not going to explain how, but uh, uh, so uh, there is a natural way that atomorphisms uh, of the free group, uh, out atomorphisms actually, they act on currents. And now uh, you can take a current and try to uh, uh, sort of think about two currents or maybe one and think about how it behaves from the point of view of this white algorithm theory. In particular, the first step of it where we try to minimize the length of uh, cyclic reduced word by trying to apply uh, um, all possible automorphisms. So it turns out that uh, not all currents behave in, from the point of view of this minimization procedure like conjugacy classes. So there are certain currents for which uh, the minimum doesn't exist uh, and the infimum of all lengths like that uh, is going to be, uh, uh, it's often uh, equal to zero. So it's actually, so if you even try to understand this infimum of all phi, in out of R. So this infimum might in general for a fixed mu well to be equal to zero. So that happens for things which sort of similar to uh, um, uh, to currents that arise from uh, stable and unstable uh, 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 laminations of pseudonos of homeomorphisms because in, in the homeomorphism in that surface world uh, uh, Sort of, you remember there is an atomorphism which divides the current uh, by lambda, where lambda is some number bigger than one. So if you keep dividing by lambda, uh, sort of iteratively, you'll converge to zero. So there are certain kind of bad uh, currents, uh, uh, you know, where this infimum is equal to zero, and then they don't behave like conjugacy classes from the point of view of analogy with a white algorithm. But then there are some others. Uh, which are good where the infimum uh, is not only positive, but it's actually achieved. So which are like conjugacy classes. And it turns out that the best sort of situation where one can guarantee that uh, uh, current behaves like a conjugacy class from the point of view of uh, weighted algorithm is when it has what's called full support. That is to say when the weight uh, of uh, V in mu is bigger than zero for every V. 
<laughs> so uh, uh, that's not the case for things like this uh, mm, uh, uh, stable current currents corresponding to fully reducible automorphisms or things which sort of are similar to uh, 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 um, to expanding and contractile uh, 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 um, uh, measured laminations in the pseudonosov case but uh, so uh, there are many currents that actually uh, uh, look like that and uh, it turns out that in the case of the random box that uh, um, appear uh, in this uh, 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 in the serum uh, uh, that's uh, that's the behavior that happens there so the support there is positive for the for certain kind of current uh, associated with the random box and for that reason one can treat that limiting current as some kind of uh, generalized con conjugacy class. So what's actually true there? So the key result there is for the random box of the type that uh, you know were covered by that theorem, there exists a certain geodesic current nu uh, with full support, uh, uh, you know, so which depends only on the random box and not on the specific uh, trajectory Wn, such that if we take a random trajectory W1, W2, Wn of this work, then uh, uh, this uh, uh, conjugacy classes, uh, uh, and remember conjugacy classes, they do define currents as uh, um, as Peter mentioned. So these conjugacy classes, when you normalize them by lengths, they actually converge to this current new in the space of all currents. So this conjugacy classes of random elements, they projectively uh, turn out to converge to this current new and uh, as n goes to infinity along the random trajectory. And moreover, this new actually, uh, it, it, it itself uh, has some features uh, in common with the conjugacy class. It has this full support property and this allows one to sort of uh, uh, basically work with this new and plug it in uh, plug this new instead of uh, a conjugacy class uh, in inside the whited uh, algorithm machinery and so the fact that uh, this wns converge to this new sort of basically means that when uh, when you get sufficiently close to new uh, uh, in, in terms of some kind of a neighborhood uh, the whited algorithm starts behaving on this wn the way it behaves on, on new so uh, i'm not going to explain sort of more than that but ultimately uh, uh, so the, uh, uh, this M minimality property of whited algorithm on WN comes from the fact that uh, we just need to describe what happens with this whited algorithm and, uh, on, on the current new. We basically need to establish this kind of M minimality type property for new itself, which is pretty easy, and then use some sort of a limiting argument uh, coming from this statement. So uh, um, I'm not uh, going to say much more than that, except that to mention that um, um, the existence of this current new to which this random conjugacy classes converge is non-trivial. So in the case of uh, uh, the sort of simple non-Bachekian random work that uh, we considered in our paper with uh, uh, Vladimir and with Polstrup, you can think about that limiting current new as something given by the law of large numbers. So you have this absolutely random element Wn and uh, what this current new records is basically frequencies of all possible uh, fixed uh, finite length words uh, v in a long random freely reduced word and you can see that uh, um, from the point of view of some kind of uh, uh, law of large numbers so if uh, i have uh, let's say a free group on two generators a1 a2 and I, I look at the number of times that let's say a1 uh, occurs uh, in wn and we divide it by n uh, where WN is this uh, random freely reduced word from the point of view of taking it uniformly at random from the sphere. So there are four generators A1, A2, A1 inverse, and uh, uh, A2 inverse. And you should be able to believe that this uh, uh, converges to one force uh, as n goes to infinity. And that's sort of what the law of large numbers says. So there is a similar statement if instead of a single letter I take a word of length two. You know, there are something like 12 words of length, uh, previous words of length two in the free group of length two, because there are four ways to choose the first letter, and for each of them, there are three ways uh, to choose the second letter. And instead of this one force, it will have one wealth. So basically, over there, this current new records this uh, limiting weight uh, coming from the law of large numbers. However, uh, in the situations that I told you about in these generalizations, especially the group random work, uh, it's no longer some kind, I mean, we are not 
anymore in such a nice situation where we can really uh, deduce everything from some very simple probability, we actually need something. So um, in this case, uh, uh, there is a result of uh, Ilya Gekman uh, about random walks on groups acting uh, geometrically on uh, cat minus one spaces, uh, which uh, implies the existence of this limit in current new. And one can also extract it from some older work of Vadim Kaimanovich using uh, um, sort of a bit of extra effort, but one needs to use something non trivial here to just prove that this limit in current new to which random conjugacy classes converge exists. So it's no longer uh, as simple as that. So I want to sort of stress that this becomes a, a non trivial problem. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention is several uh, um, things that are still unknown. Namely, uh, I made a pretty strong assumption in the beginning that uh, the elements to which I assigned uh, positive probabilities, they came from a generating set of the entire group, that they basically generated the entire free group. But what if they don't? What if they generate some kind of a subgroup? In fact, subgroup of infinite index. So this is also perfectly reasonable. So if uh, we do the random work where the elements uh, that we pick don't generate the entire group but generate a subgroup, uh, let's say finally generated subgroup of infinite index. And then uh, the method that I told you about sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. So in general, it's unclear, you know, so that there is what exactly happens there, even though uh, uh, my student, uh, Van Lin, so he, We've done some experiments which indicate that probably something uh, something like this uh, still is true, but uh, the proof uh, it, you know requires some uh, extra work. And in particular, the difficult case turns out to be where uh, the elements that we pick they generate something which lives inside a proper free factor. Uh, you know, so if, if it lives inside a proper free factor, so it seems like things would be better, but somehow the, the technology breaks down. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, there are uh, some other questions about what happens when you do more general uh, uh, types of graph uh, random walks than the ones I told you about. But I think that the, the first question is probably more interesting about understanding what happens here. All right, <laughs> I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, before asking for questions, let me recall uh, one of Ben's favorite jokes. So he said that uh, if you were sleeping through a talk, and then when it's time for questions, you want to pretend that you were awake, uh, you can always ask two questions. One is, uh, <clears throat> could you repeat the statement of theorem two? <laughs> and the other one, uh, wasn't something similar proved by Olshansky? <clears throat> But, but there is also the third standard question typically asked by Olga. Is this on the archive? Um, uh, so uh, if you notice, uh, uh, unlike Alexei's talk, there was only one theorem, theorem one in this talk. <laughs> so that makes <laughs> like, clear all the short way. Um, about Alshansky, the answer is no. There is nothing remotely similar in Alshansky's work as far as I know. And the third question, yes, there is a paper in the archive, even though it needs a substantial revision because um, the statement uh, which is proved there is formulated somewhat differently. And um, there is a, I sort of slightly cheated here in some sense because I gave you a simplified version of what's actually proved. And I mean, in that paper in the archive, there is only a more detailed version, which is also interesting, but uh, I should rewrite it to include the, include the simplified version that I told you about. So yes, there is a paper, but uh, it, it, it needs a fairly substantial revision. Okay, other questions? Yeah, it's good one. Mm -hmm. See me, can you see me? Uh, M okay, yeah, so yeah. M <laughs> is a fixed number. Uh, uh, oh, where is it? So uh, conjugacy class U uh, is min M minimal. If whenever I have a chain uh, of uh, conjugacy classes U0, U1, UK, which are distinct, which start with U, and uh, each one is obtained from the previous one by applying a single uh, uh, wide automorphism, and uh, the, the lengths uh, go down, you know, so the lengths of U0 is greater than equal than uh, the lengths of U1 and so on, then the length of this chain is less than or equal than M. So, yeah.
That's that's the definition. I don't think it's silly. Uh, it, it's crucial to include. In, uh, yeah. So this definition is tricky, but it somehow <laughs> the good part of this about this definition is that in one definition it takes care both of the first part, the easy part, and the second part of white algorithm because equalities they take care of the second part. Uh, they say that you cannot do go there for more than m steps, and uh, uh, the inequalities they take care of the first part. Yeah. So. I don't think I can. Uh, yes, quite a lot of it actually. You know something. Yes, I, uh, yes. <laughs> watching anymore? Look like so. I can't see what the hell is going on. Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean. Uh, I haven't, but I think that in this case, it's probably not very interesting because uh, the, the most natural uh, shifts that appear here are the ones which generate all freely reduced words or Maybe all uh, reduced in some finite graph. So I, I think that, uh, I mean, I haven't thought about it, but my impression is that from the point of view of the serial, I mean, it's too close to candor sets. I mean, I don't know, but my, I don't know enough, but I thought that it's probably something that is not going to be interesting for that, you know. Uh, for, for that subject okay <laughs> so uh, yeah i don't know enough about that topic so i haven't thought about it uh, well I, I mean it's complicated actually and uh, so because for most uh, hyperbolic groups the outer automorphism group is finite so there is uh, so the, the problem becomes uh, not meaningful for those where the other morphism group is infinite it's recorded by i mean so for free products uh, the, there is an analog of white algorithm there is also an analog of white algorithm for the surface group which actually is the next case which is not understood at all uh, uh, i mean the, there is a result i forgot it's actually Levit and, and walkman so they describe <laughs> Uh, this white white type algorithm that the problem that's for that's surface that's groups that's but somehow that's it's topological in nature and its complexity that's i think apart from maybe something completely obvious sometimes they have a maybe double, exponential, an maybe rate, double like. exponential bound i forgot one doesn't know anything at all so in particular over there there are no results of any kind about behavior yeah. of the white algorithm on the random elements in the group. Right, in well, any you. sense that you like for instance you can now. pick like a random direction in the tangent uh, uh, unit. So tangent, just lets uh, them um, know that they're looking at this. some point, you can flow a geodesic for a very long time. You can close Thank it up, you. you know. So what will happen uh, uh, there, we don't know. And basically, uh, one needs to understand Thank certain you. things about how this random geodesic partition uh, the surface into a bunch of uh, like triangles and quadrilaterals uh, and things of that nature, which as far as I, I know, nobody has studied and it, it's not even clear how to approach them. I think they may require some fairly sophisticated probabilistic tools beyond sort of what people usually use. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's thank Ilya again. Yeah, I don't think they're watching. <laughs> Our next talk is at 4.15.